let's make sure we're coming alive and there we are nice hi everyone this is chicho welcome to my channel and uh, welcome to another live stream today today is may 14th 2021 and we're doing a drop in math tutoring session number 74 or thereabouts let's do a little bit of mathematics and uh, we've done a lot of these as the numbering reveals uh, if not more so and we're creating math content online for 14 years i guess 14 13 14 years uh coming out to 15 years i guess and uh so we've done a lot of work and this is just basically me making myself available for a couple of hours every couple of weeks so probably twice a month uh making myself available uh to do some online math tutoring and we're doing these live streams on uh, on twitch okay and while we wait for people to roll in and this is an open discussion we're going to leave politics and economic politics on politics but economics is fair game uh for this stuff um and um whatever we're talking about mathematics takes uh, front center stage so if anybody has any math questions please let us know i do have one thing lined up that we could take a look at regarding ratios and stuff like this which i found interesting um but uh, we'll leave that alone see if it uh, if it comes up for people i do have questions or we're left to our own demise right uh aside from that as far as the intro goes i am on patreon gang patreon.com forward slash chicho c-h-y-c-h-o if you want to follow this work lord of iron how are you doing i hope you're doing well welcome to another live stream uh if you want to follow this work patreon is a great way to do so if you want to support this work patreon is a great way to do so i don't put anything behind paywall everything's creative commons and layered on mathematics for those of you who are supporting this work on patreon thank you very much for the support gang it is in large part because of your support that we're able to do what it is that we are doing we are live streaming on twitch twitch.tv forward slash chicho live c-h-y-c-h-o-l-i-o-l-i-v-e if you want to participate in these live streams and if you have math questions that you want help with or concepts that you want to understand twitch is where you want to come and attend these drop in math tutoring sessions and people have been asking me on sensor tube um you know when i do these live streams and whatnot because we're not uploading everything to sensor tube they're going to all the other platforms uh, gang on my patreon page whenever i have streams live streams uh scheduled we pin the schedule on top of patreon as well as subscribe star but i don't have anyone supporting me there so i haven't been commenting regarding subscribe star but basically we're doing mirroring everything that we do on patreon on subscribe star so if you are a subscribe star following the work there the the schedule gets pinned so whenever there's a live stream schedule there's live streams we're going to be doing you can just go to our patreon page and if there's a pin schedule there's schedules we haven't done yet right and we do have a discord page and a schedule folder where you can check our schedule there because i don't have a set weekly time that i do them i do them when i can fit them in my schedule is i've never really followed a nine to five schedule i go whenever i do right um i do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on minds lo not lo minds gab vk and parlor and you can come to our twitch channel anytime you want and type in exclamation mark social we could be live streaming or not if you type in exclamation mark social all those links will pop up including a link to our discord here where people are sharing a fair bit of information and you're definitely welcome to join us there slick mech how are you doing hey chicho here for math anything we're covering on uh, uh, covering on particular love vector last week um no it's just an open discussion i do have something lined up that if there is no math questions coming in or people needing help with certain math concepts we can take a look at that um it's related to politics but not we're not going to get into the political discussion of it it's the analysis of some data regarding three different uh channels on sensor tube and um 
and whatnot. But, you know, it's neither here nor there. Uh, we can take a look at it anytime we want, right? For live streams that don't have any visuals, we do upload the audio to soundcloud.com forward slash chicho as a podcast. And those podcasts should be available on your favorite podcasting platform, including Spotify and iTunes. Mathematics has visuals, so uh, we don't upload the mathematics to SoundCloud other than uh, some of the general math discussions videos that we've done way, way in the past. Slick me now that I'm out of college, I have nothing to bring to the table, but I'll stay for whatever you have. An awesome slick me, and congrats being out of college. Is it just a summer break for you? Yeah, you're going back next year, I'm assuming. And we will definitely load this live stream onto Sensor Tube, BitChute, Rumble, and Odyssey. Sensor Tube gets all of our mathematics content as well as all of our. Uh, julian assange and wikileaks content and food content and comic books content uh some of the other stuff uh um, probably not probably not okay aside from that gang welcome to another live stream uh in mtl but but same i just graduated but i love the chill math lives nice 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 and congrats gang congrats on the graduation man you're out of jail what are you gonna do i could have used you for my last exam <laughs> we we were we, we do these on a regular basis you should have popped in uh but i haven't done well no we did the last math one we did was two weeks ago so your exam might have been before then uh yeah i dropped out to take a break uh, uh figure out uh, oh yeah that's right what i wanted going back to studying math in a year probably okay okay elder god how are you doing it just uh, it's just modding today. Don't ask me to do math, please. <laughs> I can't hold it on. <laughs> you might like something that I got lined up. We'll see if we can get to it. Uh, just because, just because. Uh, aside from that, gang, I hope you're enjoying your uh, spring. And uh, I'll give it a couple more minutes. If no math questions come up, we'll take a look at this thing. It just involves ratios. Uh, and it was something I heard watching. Uh, a content creator on sensor tube that I that I like and something that he mentioned and I figured I check the data uh, like I've mentioned before when I listen to people when I when I listen to lectures uh, you know read books uh, read articles or read you know listen to interviews whatever it is that I'm doing if I'm consuming educational content if I hear something which intrigues me I, I could sort of pause and check it out check out what they're saying see if it's legit or if i interpret the same way so one person i consume content on sensor tube most of my video content now is off sensor tube but uh, this person doesn't have their content available on sensor tube on other platforms so sensor tube it is right or actually they do one of the other ones but uh, it's uh iffy um slick mc when you can't decide whether to do a math or politics stream so you decide to do a political math stream <laughs> and we've done a few of those by the way if you look at my previous content we've done a few political math streams uh they're in there right um and i'm going to be doing more we've got to get under the radar somehow right <laughs> liquid swords how are you doing is there a good way to calculate the shortest distance between two functions that doesn't inter that don't intersect one of the functions being a quadratic and the other one being linear uh yes there is oh should we do let's do it this is a cool question actually by the way they took this type of calculation out of the math curriculum in my part of the world out of high school so they don't teach this anymore angry chicho it brings out the angry chicho because this is a phenomenal question and different versions of it as well right do do uh, do exit live thank you very much for twice prime so um so they don't teach this anymore so i haven't taught this for this type of question or similar types of questions for eight years at least nine years which really pisses me off because they're amazing like this type of stuff is super cool right 
uh, let's do this question elder god i was watching an old video with you uh, with your a german friend from a few years ago very interesting yeah 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 dirk uh the mathematics of art and design awesome awesome i haven't seen him for a while brando hits how are you doing it it's uh, duck season rabbit season duck season rabbit season it's not tutoring season i mean session uh what's up duck i mean chicho how's it going brando hope you're doing well gang check out this question the question is this okay and this is lord uh, swords and one posted it is there a good way to calculate the shortest distance between two functions that don't intersect one of the functions being a quadratic and it gives a quadratic quadratic equation i'll write it down here and the other one being a linear function so let me write down the two functions first okay so the first function being a quadratic by the way i got new pens i got new pens it's going to be nice and bright equals negative x squared plus 5x okay so that's our quadratic quadratic is a parabola right this one opens down it's a negative in front the other one is a linear function let's call it g of x is equal to uh, negative 2x plus 15 negative 2x plus 15 oops, plus 15 okay now keep in mind that it just doesn't have to be a quadratic and linear it could be two linear lines that are parallel and you want to find the shortest distance it could be a linear line on a point and what's the shortest distance and you sort of follow the same um same technique that we're about to do here okay let me get caught up with the chat speedy gonzalez style uh hi brando hits and mtl i had one course last semester that covered a different branch of mathematics in each lecture one week was linear programming next next was non-linear programming dynamic programming on uh uncertain analysis that sounds pretty damn cool man very cool yeah zare how's it going congrats on the graduates here yeah indeed uh, now take a look at this thing so let me draw a visual as to what it is that we want to do here right the linear linear function is easy to graph and this one is easy to graph you could you could do completing the square if you want to graph it but what we'll do we'll find the x intercepts find the average and just draw an approximate graph of it okay so let's draw the graph here okay this one is a linear graph right which follows the principle y equals mx plus b that's the y intercept that's the slope right you go to the y-intercept and you do the slope that's how you graph lines right so we're going to go up to 15 let's take it up here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen we go to 15 that's the y-intercept that's negative two so it's negative two over one so we go down to over to the right once right so you can think of it as negative two over one down two over one so this is our linear graph okay so this is g of x and whenever you graph things on a cartesian coordinate system put the name of the function on there that way you can easily reference it to know which graph it is right now this one let's bring this one down here and instead of doing completely squared let's just find the two x intercepts and then take the average and find the the uh, coordinates of the vertex by plugging the average of the two x intercepts right if you don't know what i just said watch this is what we're going to do so we're going to find x ints by setting setting f of x equal to zero which f of x is your y right this is your x-axis this is your y-axis x and f of x right so what we're going to do we're going to go negative x squared plus 5x is equal to zero and then what we're going to do is we're going to factor out an x and we've got negative x plus 5 is equal to zero and we've put out videos regarding this the power of zero the thing that zero allows us to do is if we have two or more things that multiply together to give us zero we can set each one equal to zero so we've got two things multiplied together to give you zero and the only way that's possible if at least one of them is zero 
So we're going to set each one equal to 0, split this, and go x is equal to 0, and negative x plus 5 is equal to 0, so x is equal to 5, right? Those are our x-intercepts, okay? So x-intercept of 0, x-intercept of 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Boop. There's our x-intercepts. This is a parabola. A parabola looks like this. This is opening down. We know it opens down because it's got a negative uh, coefficient in front of the x squared. So it does this, right? But even if we didn't know that, what we're going to do is we know it's symmetrical. So we're going to find the average of 0 and 5. Average of x ints. Average of x ints is x average is equal to 0 plus 5 divided by 2, which is 5 divided by 2, which is 2.5, right? So 1, 2, here it is. This is 5 over 2. Now, that's the x part of the vertex. It's the axis of symmetry, right? So we know that this guy, now this isn't part of the graph. It's just a mirror. The parabola is symmetrical along that mirror, right? Now, what we need to do, we need to find the y associated with that axis of symmetry with the x part of the vertex. So all we do, we just plug in 5 over 2 for x. So we're going to find f of 5 over 2, which is equal to negative 5 over 2 squared plus 5 times 5 over 2, which is going to be negative 25 over 4 plus 25 over 2, which is going to be common denominator is 4. This is negative 25 plus multiply that by 2, multiply that by 2, 50. So it's going to be 50 over 4, right? That's the x part, that's the y part of the vertex. So the vertex for this parabola is, vertex is 5 over 2 and 50 over 4, which is 25 over 2. I'm just going to reduce it, right? Which is equal to 25 over 2, 25 over 2, which is 12 and a half, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to 12 and a half. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and a half. Oh, my graph really is touching. It's super close. What? 12 and a half. So let's say we're here okay and the parabola opens down goes like this and goes like this okay make sense so if we zoom to this into this area right I think it's unfortunate that they're so close together right very unfortunate that they're so close together because it's hard to see this but what we could do, as long as I got different colored pens, let's bring it out. Uh, MTL, is a math tutor even legit if he doesn't have his own sound effects when drawing on So let's assume we're going to take this and zoom into here, right? So we're zooming into here. What you see here is this. Let me draw it in black as well. So this is our G of X, right? G of X. It, it really, it's too bad they gave the functions too close together. I would have given a function a little bit further away. So you can actually see where it is, right? And then here's the other function. The parabola looks like this. And you want to find the shortest distance between this line and this parabola. Okay. The shortest distance between this line and this parabola. And this parabola is f of x. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna skip over uh, Slick Mick, your your comment there. Just continue on this. Okay. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> right? So what we're looking for is this. What's the shortest distance between this line and here? Right? That's what we want. Okay. So how do we do this? Well, if you do this calculation, oh actually we wanna there's gotta be there's something we're missing uh slick Mac. there's one thing you need uh from here from this question uh, it should be 
Oh, it should be 25 or 4. That's right. I did a boo-boo. This is, thank you very much. If you if you find me making mistakes, please correct me. It should be 25 over 4. I did it in my mind. That's why I didn't reduce it. And then, so it should be 25 over 4. So 4 goes into 25, but up, but up, uh, 6 times. So 6 and a quarter. That's way better. Let's erase this. So we don't even have to zoom in anymore. Let's kill this. Let's kill this. Let's kill this. But I think we need one bit of information, one more bit of info here. Wherever it is, let's say it's up there. So six and a half. One, two, three, four, five, six, six and a quarter. One, two, three, four, five, six and a quarter. So it would be here. Oh, that's way better, man. That's way better. So it goes like this. That's nice. Now we can see it, right? Uh, da, da, da. Also, not my question. I think uh, MLT asked. MLT asked uh, would be the find the per. Yeah, it's the perpendicular distance. But we need uh, a point on the line or a point on the parabola. We have to have a point. I'm pretty sure we have to have a point because the shortest this. Oh, the shortest distance. Wait a second. The shortest distance. It would have to be at a point where this touches, right? Because the distance from this point to the parabola, mm, the shortest distance, wait a second. So check this out. This is my thinking, right? The shortest distance from a point is going to be the perpendicular. It's always going to be the perpendicular from the line, right? So if we have this, check this out. If we have this, right? The shortest distance from this point to the parabola is perpendicular. It's got to be at 90 degrees, right? The shortest distance from any point on the parabola is going to be perpendicular, right? So this question says, what is the shortest distance period, right? Now, if they gave you the point, oh, by the way, I think they meant the shortest distance uh, y-wise, oh, y-wise not just in any direction the distance between the two functions are uh the 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 distance between the two functions are uh to g of x minus f of x okay y wise oh that makes it easier that makes it easier i believe so right why does it make it easier y wise because if it's y wise it would just be on the vertex because that's the highest point that guy reaches is that correct is that correct is that correct would that be correct if it's the highest point that's the highest point of the parabola but if the line was going like this I think it would just be to the vertex. Correct me if I'm wrong, gang. And Liquid Swords is saying the distance between um, uh, g of x and f of x, g of x and f of x would just be g of x minus, I should write this down, f of x, right? So let's uh, create some room for us to work. I'm going to take down all of this, okay? I'm going to take down all of this. No, I think it's a bit further than the vertex upper function minus lower function usually signifies a distance between them yeah it does you subtract them right so you're subtracting the y's let me erase all this this would have been this would have been really easy if they give you a point on the line or a point on the parabola but they're becoming very general right dr mang Mat matin for small distances in x 2x is greater yeah that's the thing i'm thinking about right because this is expanding at x squared but if it's a really short distance 2x is going to be greater than x squared right but this is a longer distance so let's first of all let's do this let's see where where this takes us 
this question is not the, I thought it was obvious what the answer was but it's not as obvious okay uh, since the slope is lower for a while after the vertex yeah but this thing's expanding speedy Gonzalez style right so if it's the shortest distance it's going to be very close to the vertex if it's not the vertex like it won't be over here because that's expanding way too fast now right so it would have to be within this region right within here and here otherwise you're already gone it's past it right but the distance distance between g of x and f of x because g of x is your y because they want the vertical distance right so they want this what's the shortest vertical distance so technically speaking you could just or visually speaking you could just do this right and you're going to pick the shortest line right that's what it means that's what they're looking for right if it's just a y difference then f of x and g of x are your y axes right and because g is higher up than f we're just going to go g of x minus f of x right and then we're going to minimize that right minimize minimize. how do we go about minimizing let's do the subtraction first and then we'll figure out how to minimize it right to minimize it uh okay let, let's draw it out let's see what we end up getting right or write it up so g of x is going to be negative 2x plus 15 minus negative x squared plus 5x so this is going to be negative 2x plus 15 plus x squared minus 5x so it's going to be x squared minus 7x plus 15 right did I have any brain farts there did I have any brain farts there before I continue because I made one brain fart before with the vertex the vertex here was what was the vertex we didn't write it down here let's write it down here vertex for parabola uh, vertex was uh, 5 over 2 and 25 over 4 right that's this point here okay was also thinking that creating a new function that is this then using derivatives to find the critical point yeah you could do that and here's the other thing you could do you want to find the minimum of this right if you want to find the minimum of this would it work if we just found the vertex of this because the vertex of this function because it's a combination of this function and this function generating a new function the minimum should be the minimum so all you really need to do is find the vertex of this and you should have the minimum okay the y uh the y part of the vertex let's do both methods okay let's do both methods so the new function is the distance functions we're getting into complex numbers i think are we getting i don't know no i don't think so. i don't think it should be complex is it uh 49 oh crap it is going to be complex what the hell this is going to be a complex number it is the roots of this equation will be called yeah it is complex so that doesn't make sense right if we take the derivative but that should do it how come it's not going to do it do we have a brain fart or did i have a brain fart here uh did i have a brain fart here was that supposed to be plus 5x or did I write it down properly da, 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 da. yeah it's plus 5x uh, because if we take the derivative no, not the derivative if we try to find uh, the factors of this they're gonna be complex yes plus I think yeah it is plus I just scrolled up and it was plus so that's not gonna work okay so let's call this d of x the distance so this function should give us the distance of the line and the parabola if I'm not mistaken right expired sandwich you're such a judge you remind me of my late grandfather who was an amazing math tutor and carried me through high school math and you also remind me of one of my favorite priests 
who passed away. Oh no, last year son suddenly. I love watching your content. Much love, much love right back, expired sandwich. And uh, by the way, the, the way the way I teach is exactly the way you see here. If a question comes up that I don't know how to do right off the bat, we work on it together because I'm learning something, my students are learning something. That's one of the, the reasons I love what I do because I'm constantly kept on my toes, right? So from what I understand, this should give us a different distance between the whys, right? Oh, check this out, check this out. This thing, here's the reason, here's the reason that this is gonna be complex. Have you guys figured out why it's going to be complex i can tell you why it's going to be complex should we do it hold on i'm going to give you a couple of seconds to figure out if, if it's going to be complex or not so we can't find the x-intercepts we need to find the vertex okay so passion the shines really awesome it's a this it's it's a distance but there's a reason why um it won't work because when we find the vertex of this it's not going to cross the x axis right because one of the reasons the one is very big yeah because it's the x squared kicking in versus 2x right so what's happening is it's trying to find the x intercepts the distance between the line and a parabola that's going crazy i believe so anyway right or no it should we do not need uh, the plus 15. Well, you know what? I'm going to go find a vertex of it. We don't need the plus 15. How come? So we can just take that out. I don't know if we can or not. Could we maybe look at the uh, discriminant of d of x to find the line of section? The, the problem with the discriminant of the v of x or d of x uh, it's not it's going to be an imaginary number it's a negative number right but let's find the vertex of this thing find a vertex put those in there brackets divide this by two this is completing the square right square it you get 49 over 4 add and subtract that inside the brackets x squared minus 7x plus 49 over 4 minus 49 over 4 plus 15 grab this do wiki kick it out and this factor is that guy so x minus 7 over 2 squared that guy comes out becomes negative 49 over 4 so add those guys together it's 4 60 minus 49 so it's going to be 11 plus 11 over 49 um plus 11 over 4 so that's the vertex of this parabola right also it's just a displacement in the y direction the vertex is gonna stay at the same x value for any constant the vertex is gonna stay same value x value for any constant let me th think about that is that correct the two questions will never meet uh, equations will never meet so I think it's complex but i think the vertex the y part of the vertex is the shortest distance is it not isn't this the shortest distance right and this is going to be the x part of it so i believe what's the problem the problem is find the shortest distance shortest vertical distance between f of x and g of x right so if it's the shortest vertical and we're not given um, any points to start off on the wall on the line or the parabola so in it, if we're given a point it would be easy right then you just find the perpendicular you find the shortest distance if it was just the shortest distance if it's the y you just find the distance between them right thought we search for the x. I, I think we got the x so the shortest distance um, between uh, not the shortest distance the the point uh, da, 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 the point where 
would that be the shortest distance? It's the X part of it. So this would be 3.5. If I'm going to redraw this, I want to redraw this here. That way we get close. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm getting 3.5. That's 7 over 2. You take the opposite side of that. And 11 over 4 is um, 2 and 3 quarters, right? 1, 2, and 3 quarters. Boing. So that's the vertex and that thing opens up and we don't care about that. So that's the vertex of the distance, right? So it would be, I believe it would be here for the X part, seven over two and 11. Well, no, no, it wouldn't be uh, 11 over two. We don't know what the point is, right? But I think this is the distance. It would be two and three quarters, would it not? Am I mistaken on this? That is the X that gives the shortest distance in Y. If it was the shortest distance, I'd use linear algebra. Yeah, crafter? Does this channel cover uh, um, differential? We've done a little bit of... Uh, uh, finding derivatives a little bit. I mean, we can find a derivative of this. What was the other method? We we're saying find a derivative and find the inflection point, right? Where it rolls over, where the slope is zero. And that would be, if you take the derivative here, let me do this in uh, red, right? So if you take the derivative of d of x, so d prime of x is going to be 2x minus 7, right? So d So d prime of us is 2x minus 7, which is this guy. If you set d, d prime of x equal to 0, then you get 2x minus 7 is equal to 0. So 2x is equal to 7. So x is equal to 7 over 2, which is also the same thing as, right? This is essentially minimization over convex set right I don't know I don't know if that's what they call it or not it could be right so um, dr. Hang is that correct so the X occurs at 7 over 2 and the distance the shortest distance would be 11 over 4 which is this is 11 over 4 that's the shortest distance because our function was d of x was g of x minus f of x is that correct this is actually really cool i don't think uh, i haven't done a question like this uh teaching um when they took it out uh, uh this complex of a question wasn't in the curriculum they usually give you a point and they said find the shortest distance so the solution is f prime of x equals f prime of g no i don't think so i don't think so uh keaton should indeed be correct liquid source seven over two should indeed be correct we have found the x value where the shortest distance occurs but what is the shortest distance so x is seven over two isn't this the shortest distance is is this not the shortest distance because we're trying to find the minimum value because if this is the parabola, right? This is the parabola, it opens up. So we know the minimum is this, which is 11 over four, right? Okay, yeah, we have the same solution. True, I believe the answer is 11 over four. Awesome, great question, fantastic. I love it. I've never done anything like this before, so cool okay yeah we have the same solution so liquid source were you guys doing this using um doing the derivative so if you did the derivative you got the x value how are how do you get your 11 over 4 do you kick this back up to here find the two y's oh that's what you would do check this out that's what you would do you have the same solution at the point so what you do is do this here, let's do this in green since we've got lots of colors going on. Shortest distance from, that's exactly it. That's what it would be, right? 
slope uh, a half right the shortest distance between Daran uh, 3.5 5.25 to the line Dara is the shortest uh, is the line that passes through Papa I did use the derivative just now and plug it back in yeah you plug it back in length of the line segment of the line yeah so basically what you would do is plug in 7 over 2 for F in X here so do, 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 do. let's do this here so find f of seven over two which is let me erase that here let's complete this again it was actually uh, a question someone asked me on a swedish math forum just wanted to share it awesome liquid source super cool i like it negative uh, 7 over 2 squared plus 5 oh, 7 over 2 so this would be negative 49 over 4 plus 35 over 2 which is going to be ba -da -ba, that's going to be 70 here let's do it 4 negative 49 plus 70 what is that um, a brain fart uh, 21 right 21 over 4 is that correct uh, yeah, 21 over 4. The guy, uh, the guy that posed the question didn't even know what a derivative was. Yeah, you don't need derivatives to do this, by the way. We did it without derivatives, right? So what you would do, this would be 21 over 4. Okay, that's the y part of this point. So this point is 7 over 2 and 21 over 4. And then you plug in 7 over 2 for g of x. So g of 7 over 2 is going to be negative 2, 7 over 2 plus 15. 2 kills 2, so that's negative 7 plus 15 is equal to 8. Does that work? 8. Did I do a brain fart? Oh, yeah. That's not that this point because that was a parabola this point is 7 over 2 and 21 over 4 and this point is 7 over 2 and 8 right so if you want to find the shortest distance between this point and this point you just subtract the y values and that should give us the same answer as 11 over 4 right let's check it out let's do this in the green here we're all over the place i love it this is the way math should be chaos right as long as you've been following the work you know exactly what it is that you're doing and we've got different color pens rock and roll so we got 8 minus 21 over 4 which is common denominators 4 8 times 4 is 32 minus 21 which is equal to da -da -da -da, 11 over 4 rock and roll same answer right checks out awesome great question love it love it love it great question so cool so cool right i gotta remember this question give it to some of my students <laughs> they don't do this anymore though so they took it out crap right super cool question by the way thank you for that liquid swords you can go back and take a snapshot of this and here i'll step out of the way here's a solution follow the black uh color first and then the red color and then the green right fun 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 i love these types of things that all of a sudden you start thinking about how you go about doing something that you haven't done before right good for the brain good for the brain builds the connections a lot better right builds the connections a lot better by the way gang do you guys have snacks i got my chocolates are back they're this time they're not melting we're sitting outside and the sun was hitting them so they melted this is just vertical distance uh the word. yeah this is just vertical distance and uh, not the shortest the shortest vertical distance yeah just vertical distance indeed yeah mr sly or rm sly it's math we're all used to following a complex mess of work yeah yeah i know 
it's man if you can find if you can if you can follow this your money right okay no spoon no spoon required but i brought it anyway <laughs> it was yesterday's chocolate melted and was so delicious eating it with a spoon later and gang don't forget free assange free assange free assange julian assange is a publisher and journalist that is being crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capital as power to humanity for more information see wikileaks.org defend.wikileaks.org or our julian assange and wikileaks playlist on sensor 2. dr hang matten this was super interesting we could search for the shortest x distance now yeah you could sh uh, you could do the same thing shortest x distance mm -mm 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 -mm. how would you do the shortest x distance how would you do the shortest x distance free assange liquid source got beer and chips imperial stouts has has become a favorite nice nice Man, i haven't had beer for so long ah you don't know I, i'm not sure either i'm trying to think about it how would you find the shortest x distance you could you could do this right flip these around flip them around do a 90 degree rotation on this make the x y and the y x and then find the shortest distance between those two points i think you can invert functions yeah and do uh do same process yeah that's what i was thinking right but it's been a while since i've done this yeah i think you should be able to do that right sly yeah take the inverse of the functions right it might become tricky because now that's not no longer quadratic it's a um what do you call it um a radical right i need to learn english as i did not understand the class and i was very interested in it i hope to learn to understand yeah slowly english is a hard language to learn uh, cook, uh choco choco milk right keaton yeah invert and just use the right half of g of x yeah i think so i think that's what you would have to do right oh yeah that's the way to go yeah it's uh it adds that one extra element right pretty cool though and the board would look messier and remember we are we already had to do some some work to be able to graph it uh, to get our visual so we already did a little bit of racing so this is a super cool question super cool question i'm going to take these down see if there's any other questions uh, if there isn't we can definitely take a look at some ratios to 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 confirm uh, information uh, from someone right okay so the total distance is minimized when f of x is at set uh, 7 over 2 and 21 over 4 and g of x is at uh why where'd you get 23 over 5 and 29 over 5 ah uh, keaton I thought we got the points as oh, I erased it as uh, for G of X it was 7 over 2 and 8 I believe that was the point of uh, of the vertical of the ba -ba 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 vertical distance right yeah and then if you're gonna make it perpendicular so if it was like this this point here this point was seven over two and eight this point was seven over two and 21 over four 21 over four 21 over four 
that was the vertical distance right and if you take this and make it 90 degrees is that the point you're talking about which is uh, uh, 23 over 5 23 over 5 and 29 over 5 29 over 5 is that what you're referencing your vertical distance seems fine yeah this minimum total distance not vertical yeah I believe so right and that is easy to find that would be easy to find I believe right because all you need to do is find an equation of a line here we could do it you need to find the equation of this line right let's assume we don't know that yet right the equation of this line is going to be y is equal to mx plus b right now we need the m and the b for this line now what was the g of x g of x was negative 2x plus 15 I believe that was a function right so if this line is perpendicular to this line then the slope of the perpendicular slope of the perpendicular is going to be negative reciprocal of that right negative reciprocal of negative 2 is 1 over 2 you flip it and change the sign right so 1 over 2 so that means we have m so y is equal to 1 over 2 x plus b now we need to find the b which is the y-intercept the y-intercept was over here somewhere right the y-intercept would have been like here somewhere right so we need to find that point that's your b so all you got to do is plug in a point you know in that's going to be on the line to find your b so you're going to take this guy whoop and plug it into here for x and y you're going to get 21 over 4 is equal to 1 over 2 times 7 over 2 plus d okay so this becomes 21 over 4 plus 7 over 4 plus b bring the 7 over so that's going to be 14 over 4 is b so you just found the equation of the line this line the perpendicular line to the other line right so y is equal to a half x plus 14 over 4 so now all you need to do is find the intersection of this line and this line right and to find the intersection of that you set them equal to each other right you want to find out at what point or what point exists on both this line and this line right well that means you want to find the y there right and the x and the y there so you set them both equal to each other you set g of x set g of x equal to y right that means you set that equal to this so you're going to get negative 2x plus 15 is equal to a half x plus 14 over 4 multiply everything by 4 to get rid of the denominators right you're going to get negative 8x plus 60 is equal to 2x plus 14 and then solve for x here i'm going to grab the negative 8 bring it over so that's 8x i'm going to grab 14 bring it over it becomes negative negative 14 so you're going to get 10x is equal to 46 46 divide by 10 so x is equal to 23 over 5 is that what we got yeah the x is 23 over 5 right so that's correct 23 over 5 and then if you want the y all you got to do is just plug this in either in for this x or this x you're gonna get the same y out doesn't matter doesn't make a difference right because that's what you were doing so let's just plug it into which one is easier to plug it into that one is easier to plug into obviously right so let's find g of 23 over 5 which is going to be negative 2 times 23 over 5 plus 15 which is going to be negative 46 over 5 plus 15 common denominator is 5 so that's 60 which is going to be what is that uh, 14 oh we didn't get uh, 29 did I make a have a brain fart 
Did I have a brain fart? 15. Oh, it's five, not four. So this is 75, right? 75. Okay. So that should be 29. Here, 75 minus 46 is 6, 15, uh, 29. So that's 29. So it's going to be 29 over 5, which is the Y point. Once you got that, you have this point and you have this point, and then you use your distance formula, which is Pythagorean theorem, which you're doing the triangle. You subtract the two Y's, you subtract the two X's, you get your X and Y distance there, and then you do A squared plus B squared equals C squared, right? Nice combination, right? Yeah, and the way you find that, 7 over 2, 21 over is the correct point to start um, for uh, from on f of, f of x is by setting the derivative equal to each other, setting the derivatives equal to each other. The slope, okay. You, you can layer and layer and layer and layer, keep on going with it, right? Super cool. And, and then you would just do a squared plus b squared, like I mentioned, right? Super cool question. Super cool question, multi-layered. This type of question would be, if they gave you a point for a parabola on a line and they said, what's the shortest distance between the line and the parabola or the parabola and the line, that would be more of a grade 11 question, grade 10, grade 11 question. If it was two lines, parallel lines, it was grade 10. They took it out 10 years ago. Don't teach it anymore. Too complicated, right? Don't want to make children too smart. They might question the system, right? They might figure out how to work around the system, right? So our centralized education system is more geared towards indoctrination, not education, right? But that was about 10 years ago they used to teach that in grade 10. Because this involved parabolas, uh, where you had to find the equation of parabola, it would have been grade 11 that they would have had a question like this. If it would involve derivatives, it would have been grade 12. I love this channel. <laughs> Some styles, PG styles. <laughs> Thanks, me too. <laughs> Fun stuff. Great question. Great question. Super fun. Super fun. Good way to get the get the brain working. Cool, cool, cool. And I love having these new pens. Bright math confuses me the only reason it confuses you is because you might be trying to learn mathematics at a at a level that you're not prepared for and the reason that might be is because our educational system is pure garbage so you really have to teach yourself uh, lola uh, mathematics uh, do so it'll it's good for you okay they they made me too too smart but i left school in the 1980s <laughs> And by the way, gang, in the 1980s, when I was in high school, the math curriculum was probably 30 to 40 percent more content than it is now. Like, no joking, right? 30 to 40 percent more mathematics was being taught to students in, in the 1980s than it is now. Just think about how absurd that is, because mathematics rules our world a lot more now than it did in the 1980s and what they've done is they dumbed down the curriculum where they're not empowering uh, human beings to be what they want to be right uh, unfortunate unfortunate dr hang does that mean we also have a right angle at the point of the parabola a tangent to the parabola uh, because because the parabola is always curving you can't really have an angle to a curving thing so it would have to be the tangent to the parabola right so it would have to be at this point where the lines were meeting the tangent of this parabola would be parallel to that guy right and that would be 90 degrees right 
Yeah, tangent. Oh, you've been learning from it? Awesome, Lola. I'm glad you're enjoying this. It's it's fun, really. Someone says something about a kissing number to me the other day. I have no idea what that means. Kissing number. I don't know what a kissing number is. What's it's not 69, is it? Kissing number? Should we do a little bit of mathematics that's more on a simpler side? I have some data that it would be cool to take a look at. Uh, but it's up to you guys. If there's any questions um, that you need help with that you want to talk about, we could do. And gang, again, don't forget, free Assange, free Assange, free Assange. Julian Assange is a publisher and journalist that is being crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capital as power to humanity. For more information, see wikileaks.org, defend.wikileaks.org, or our Julian Assange and WikiLeaks playlist on Sensor 2. Haha. <laughs> well, maybe 69 is the answer. <laughs> Depends who asked of you, right? Depends who asked of you. Should we do some ratios? Because with ratios, you could almost rule the world, right? I've got Assange's Google interview book to read. Awesome awesome i have a super difficult riddle not sure if we will be able to solve it here in time but i would be interested to see uh you to tackle it sure drop it in fit ratios i'm bad with shapes uh this one the, the ratios i have is, is not shapes you can you, you can drop the riddle for us uh dr hang we could think about it if i don't know it off the bat we might do the ratios and let that question you know bounce around the head a little bit and see if an answer will come up right why not why not always good to challenge is it a math riddle i'm usually pretty bad at riddles to tell you the truth i you know if i was a victim of the riddler i'd die he'd kill me solve this riddle to free yourself don't so here's a question i believe at least it took me like forever okay maybe it's easier for you three points a b and c are placed at random on a circle of radius r what is the probability oh that the triangle abc is acute acute is smaller than 90 degrees right the angle obtuse i always forget the names uh acute is less than 90 right and this is probability oh yeah this would take me forever as soon as you introduce probability it's like dang because i'm not uh, they took probability they used to teach probability in high school uh in my part of the world they took probability out of high school about 12 years ago 10 years ago again right they revamped the curriculum and drop 30 percent of the content so basically the question is this the riddle you got a circle of radius one radius of one radius of one point a b c a b c and uh our place on random on a circle what is it probably that the triangle a b c is acute So basically they're saying they want this but all the angles have to be less than 90 degrees right all the angles have to be less than 90 degrees so the way i drew it is not going to be the way it would be drawn let's assume it would be a uh doo -doo. oh wait a second what does it mean for a triangle to yeah less th there's no angles greater than 90 degrees so all these angles are less than 90. So the way I drew it, here, let me draw it better. Uh, that way, visually, it's more appealing, right? So if you have this, so, right, it would be like this, and the radius is one, okay? So that means the distance from here to any point is one, 
to there is one and to there is one i'm pretty sure this is, this has a lot to do with it you would have to start off uh something like that and then ultra all triangles by definition have at least two acute angles okay all acute yeah all acute yeah by definition they have they have to have at least two acute angles right so they're all acute they all have to be less than 90 degrees so if they're all less than 90 degrees if the radius is one right you could do this and this plus this plus this has to equal 360 right there's no other sp uh, stipulation of see it goes into probability i i can't do the probability aspect of it um, I haven't done probability on this, right? But I think this is the way you would have to approach it. I believe is this the way you approached it, Doctor Hain? To get an idea, to get a because once you do this, once you do this, then you would have to figure out a point, a limit where this angle becomes less than. Uh, less than what right could you use the fact angles yes yeah it's a good start it's a good start I think this is where you would have to start uh, could you use the fact that they're all they all need to be on the same semicircle to have an angle greater than 90 Could you use the fact that they all need to be on the same semicircle? But they don't all need to be on the same semicircle. And if they are all in the same semicircle, as long as they're not exactly equidistant, they must have and up to yeah up, up to yeah if they're both if all three on the same semicircle then the angle would be up to so that doesn't work right elder god an acute angle okay this is definition an acute angle or uh acu an acute triangle or acute angle triangle is a triangle with three acute angles less than 90 degrees an obtuse angle or obtuse angle triangle is a triangle with one obtuse angle greater than 90 degrees and two acute angles yeah to be non-acute uh, they do I think yeah to be non-acute they do they would have to be on the same semicircle right yeah i wouldn't know how to go about it nice question though difficult difficult but this is the way i would start it this is the way i would start it and then if you find the answer if you know well you know the answer go to our discord page and post the post the solution please dr hang here's our discord page we have a math folder or a maths folder in heavy topics not the way i would have wrote it uh, dr hank says yeah very difficult feel free to pivot away from it yeah i took it down <laughs> i'm like i would have to spend all day trying to figure it out and look things up right so can that be used somehow you get a free choice on the first two points yeah but then the third is very constrained for where it can't be and still be acute. Yeah. And here's the thing. Oh, you're looking for the probability, not the possible angles. So this is like rolling dice. Let's check this out. So that's very good, by the way. Uh, SS, SSTA. I did that problem in school but I can't remember so basically your first choice anywhere doesn't matter 
Your second choice, anywhere, doesn't matter. Your third choice cannot be in the same semicircle as the other two, right? So the, the problem would be the semicircle could be, if this is the center, could be from this point all the way to the other point. So if you drew, that's a semicircle, that's a semicircle. So if you put any, the point anywhere along here, you satisfy the, the question, right? So the probability would just be that, right? I did that, 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 that. Does, is that correct? So if you do this, let's take it to the extreme. Let's you say you put one there and you can't put it exactly on the opposite side. Let's go, you put it here, just off that thing. Then the other point could be anywhere along here. So are you close to 50%? I don't, that doesn't make sense. Hmm. Yes, that's the picture that was in my head. I don't know how to translate that to probability. Well, the probability would be you could put the point anywhere along here. So you could get as close as you want to this point to the diameter, the semicircle. And as long as you don't touch it, because as soon as you touch it, you're going to get a uh, triangle that's obtuse, right? Then any point along here would make a triangle that's all angles are acute. So are we talking 50%? Dr. Hang, 50%? No. You got a 50% probability of creating a triangle that's a, uh, acute? That seems way too high. Something we're not considering here. No, no, it's, it's way too high. But the allowable arc, you can pick the third point from changes depending on where the first two points are, I think. Yeah, it would really depend on the first two points. Also, I think in the picture below, it would be close to 100. Would it be? Let's assume here. We'd be close to 100%. Well, no, because all of the points on here would not not be included. The probability of third point producing a Q triangle is continuous function of the choice of second point. Hence the integral. Is it integral? 66%. Uh -huh. Is it beats? Because check this out, like any point here would make all these angles acute, right? As long as this point is not on it, does 90 degree count as acute or not? No, it doesn't. 90 degree is 90 degree triangle. It's not acute. Oh, you do not go through the center. Uh, in the problem below no you don't go through the center you're not through the center right you can't be on the center otherwise this becomes 90 degrees right like that's the that's the circle if you go through the if it's a diameter then any triangle here makes this 90 degrees and you can't you can't do that if you pick the first two points as di diamet uh, diametric then all choices on the third point are night yeah are 90 degrees as long as the points aren't superimposed yeah yes that is what i meant yeah yeah so we just have to be off that right that's why i say it is a close to 50 percent because as soon as you hit it it's 50 percent but okay so 50 percent is too high 50 percent is too high 50 percent is too high so there's something else at play here uh, and it is a relationship between this because let's say the two points go the other extreme 
let's say this point and this point, then what do you have to play with? Go through the diameters. You can only have a point in here for it to be to work, right? So how do you how do you incorporate that with that? Right? How do you incorporate the two? Exactly, yeah. Interesting. Interesting. I'm not really sure how to, how to go beyond that. I think it's uh, I saw a variable answer and I remember, sorry. It was 1987, 1987. Yeah. So 0.5 is a way too high upper bound it's a way too high upper bound because the two points the first two points could be very close together if they're very close together on the extreme end here on the extreme end if we draw a circle let's assume the two points are extremely close together if they're both going through the center then you're limited to this so if you did it this way, then that would be almost 0%. If you take the average, 50 and 25 is 0. So 25%? Was that the answer, Dr. Hang? 25% probability that you can make an acute angle? No, it can't be that simple. Right? Knowing math, the answer probably involves pi. Yeah. Yeah. Pi somehow. And maybe E as well. Yeah, maybe some of those, some of the magic numbers, right? <laughs> and zero and one, right? Fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy cool, though. If you do have the answer, I'll post it in our Discord page, uh, Dr. Hang. It'd be cool to see it, that, especially if there's visuals with it, just to get a better visual of this, right? Funny enough, 25% is correct, but I think the argument is not. Yeah, 25% the, the is correct. So the ma one, one, one bound would be 50%, the other bound would be zero. Take the average, 25. Now, if you, and if you did it that way on a test, would you get marks for it? If I was a teacher, I'd give the mark. I, I would, because it would be the, the person went through the logic trying to figure it out, right? And because we did it this way <laughs> so it is 25 percent, really i wonder if this is a legitimate way of doing it by the way i wonder if this is a legitimate way of doing it also 75 so i don't remember i can visualize the geometry but i have no clue how to make it into probability very interesting problem though very interesting problem right i'm more of a of an uh engineer i write code to pick a lot of random points and count to see if that gave me an insight yeah maybe i'm confused i, I don't know other god 75 percent would be the opposite of the 25 right i did it very similar to the way elder god uh lined it out really let's check it out how did elder god line it out I missed it. Oh, I didn't. Oh, there it is. Aldegar, the probability of the third point producing an acute triangle is a continuous function of the choice of the second point, hence the integral. So you, you need to go to into in, integral. And that's something, place I'm not going to go. It's a variable of the second point. It's a variable of the second point, which is what we're doing visually, right? But I don't know how you would go about it with the integral. Yeah, but maybe it's way too complicated now that you came up with this rationale. This rationale seem it logical. I don't know if it's like how do you prove it? That's the kicker, right? I think trying stuff out to see if it leads to something that looks sane is is a valid approach to finding an answer. Then you can try to find a way to actually solve it usually that involves induction just to mess with me yeah yeah and prove some horrendous app so 
Uh, I like a lo logical reasoning through things, but integral over the angles at which point a non acute triangle comes out. Should we do something very simple mathematics ratios should we do a little bit of ratios let's do a little bit of ratios i'm going to give you guys uh, here's analysis that we can do okay simple analysis that mathematics the power that mathematics gives you if you want to confirm something okay type it out at some point but i like your solution maybe there's a nice way thanks <laughs> luck maybe right so here's here's the power of ratios right here here's what ratios will do is confirm or deny something you've heard uh, allows you to look into something a little bit more in depth to find out if there's a valid arg argument towards something or not right basically ratios if you understand them you could you could do almost anything that you want to do right now yesterday or day before a couple of days ago i was listening to jimmy dory right and if you've been watching my work and if you've been watching anybody's work on sensor tube that is an independent creator you'll know uh night pop please keep uh, uh, this is this is related to um to, just in case just in case now this is related to something that all independent creators on sensor tube have encountered which is basically sensor tube has modified their algorithms to demote independent content creators and to promote centralized power right those uh, who they consider to be authoritative figures and the authority that they're getting uh, that they have is basically money right so basically they've been promoting anybody or any institution that is extremely wealthy and independent creators they've been demoting right either by deplatforming shadow banning messing around with their stats uh, unsubscribing uh, people from their channel not doing the subscriber counts correctly and whatever and not promoting them not recommending them and all that jazz right so I was listening to Jimmy Dory uh, a couple of days ago or so and i've heard him say this before but this time i decided to look into the numbers look into the stats and see what's what right and he mentioned uh, a channel of uh, views on a certain channel uh, shadow banning is basically uh not not even in a search like if you go to sensor tube and you found a video that might be a little bit controversial and you type in the exact title of that video in the search it won't even show up right like doing a search on a search engine on any platform where they don't even show you the results of the exact phrases the content that you're trying to find that's shadow banning right whereas I follow I am not getting notifications. yeah I don't get notifications for any YouTube uh, sensor tube channels that I follow right uh, uh, my pleasure dr. Hank now check this out Jimmy Dory, when I was watching his content, he was talking about uh, Democracy Now. Democracy Now used to be a news platform that I used to follow on. It was very unfortunate seeing him go just total shite. They just became crap after 2006 because they got into Russia Gate and they were propagating just garbage, just lies from centralized power, right? It was just insane. The kitty cats are wrestling, right? It was just insane. So I stopped consuming their propaganda uh, because it just became propaganda they used to do legit accurate reporting but no longer right and jimmy dory was ripping them a new one he was he, he was just trash talking i'm like up the yin yang he did that with democracy now and he did that with uh the young turks and the young turks i i years ago i watched like one or two of their videos i realized they were just pure propaganda just garbage so i didn't consume any of their information i know jimmy dory came out of the young turks 
but one of the reasons he left the Young Turks was because they were censoring him and stuff like this. So that's the sort of an intro to this, right? But basically, Jimmy Dory says said this, and he keeps on saying this. He said, if you take a look at the number of subscribers that the Young Turks have and the number of subscribers that Democracy Now have, they're more than what Jimmy Dory has. But Jimmy Dory gets more views than those guys, right? Even though Jimmy Dory's subscribers are less, even though Jimmy Dory is basically to a certain degree shadow banned, to his his content is not promoted like the way it is democracy now and the Young Turks and all that jazz, right? Uh, Dory, uh, D O R E, uh, Jimmy Dory, or D O O R E, I believe. His, um, oh. <laughs> right now, check this out. Uh, barely, barely too too big. He, he's been he brings on people that he interviews there that lay down facts like mad right from Aaron Maté to Max Blumenthal to 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 tons of people that are on the ground foots on the ground telling people where it's at right but we won't get into the politics of it right here's the stats for Jimmy Dory democracy now and the Young Turks right I'm gonna write down some of their info right Jimmy Dory or D O R E, right? So Jimmy Dore, Jimmy Dore. Actually, let's make a little bit of room here. Hold on, let's do this. Jimmy Dore, Jimmy Dory, Democracy, oops, not M, Democracy Now. democracy now and the young Turks pure garbage the young Turks the pure pure garbage propaganda up the yin yang they don't know what the hell they're talking about right here's the stats daily views daily views and here I'm just going to social blade to grab the general stats here right so here is I'm just gonna link this up on our Discord page. Doink. Doink. So that's social blade for Jimmy Dore. You can find the democracy and young Turks on there too. So daily average views, right? Weekly average. Weekly average. Okay. And then you got last 30 days last 30 days and then we have ba -ba -da -da -da, view uh, video views uh, dun, 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 dun. video views last 30 days oh yeah then we have subscribers so I'm gonna give you two stats here one is uh, mm, subscribers and the other one is uh, should we do subscribers yeah let's do subscribers too. daily views and then I'm gonna do daily subscribers here let me take this off so daily views actually let's do it this way let's make it nicer we're gonna create a table so daily daily view and then subscriber weekly weekly view let's kick this up a little bit do, do, do weekly view and subscriber and then monthly view and subscriber right so jimmy dory's daily view is 100 uh, uh ba -ba -ba. oh sorry subscriber is 100 view is 216,000. so subscriber is 100 daily and 216,000 views daily weekly subs is 700 and 1.5 million weekly views 1.5 million okay and last 30 days number of subscribers is 3,000 and 6.5 million approximately okay let's do democracy now young turks is garbage 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 right oh yeah let's do total subs total subs total subs for 
Jimmy Dory is 666,000. Or sorry, 866,000. Okay. Thanks, Elder God. I almost forgot a very important metric. Okay. Now, let's go to democracy now. Democracy total subs is 892,000. Here, let's do let's put the 1,000. 866k. 892k 892k and let's bring out the democracy now stats daily views uh sorry daily subs is 300 daily views is 134,000 can you see the difference right now right can you see the difference right now on sensor tube Jimmy Dore is only getting 100 subscribers per day average. His views is 216,000. Look at Democracy now. They're getting 300 subs brand new subscribers a day, but their views are 134,000. Wait a second. I see some kind of discrepancy here. Okay, anomaly happening already with the first stat we look at, right? And they have approximately the same number of subs, right? Total subs, right? So something's going on. There's less people watching Democracy now, but they're getting more subscribers. Hmm, interesting. Let's take a look at this. Weekly is two, 2,000. Here, we'll do it. 2,100 subscribers they're getting new. Total views, 940,000. 940,000. Again, three times, three times more subscribers, but their views are less what's going on here man Nine thousand subscribers on a monthly basis and their views four million right interesting interesting now let's look at the young turks now the young turks have have a total of 5.2 million subscribers wow that's a lot right Ooh, ah but look at this thing their average daily subscriber count is not available because I'm assuming they turned it off, right? They turn it off. Their views, daily views, is 972,000. 972,000. Okay. 972,000. And take view counts on sensor tube and subscriber. Take stats coming out of sensor tube with a gigantic grain of salt, right? because they're fixing the numbers there we, we can't even get the daily new subscribers for young Turks because I'm assuming they turned it off why would they turn it off huh? their weekly views is 6.8 million 6.8 million and no we can't get a weekly count and their total views is 209 sorry 29 um, million monthly views and sorry we can't get a 30-day average right that said you can go to uh, what do you call it? social blade and do a, a top you can do a detailed stats and it shows that in the last month they've had a 10,000 new subscribers in the last month they've had 10,000 new subscribers right because you can do uh, the detailed stats and it does it on a monthly basis for a month so we can extrapolate that in one month maybe they had 10,000 new subscribers right 10,000 which means their growth rate is shit compared to Jimmy Dory right because they got 5.2 million subscribers. Jimmy Dory's only got this much, right? So what you can do is just do straight up ratios, right? Blasphemy, treachery is what I see. Treachery is what I see, right? So I was doing this to fact check Jimmy Dory, right? Because I love the math, right? Maybe 12,000 would be nice. Well, and this is, I don't know about this. Uh, it's coming up from sensor tube so I don't know if it's legit or not right hi sir after this could you cover functions and mathematics after th after this all up the 
I'll try I'll try let's check it out let's let's do let's just do some straight up really simple algebra right let's look at the ratio so right away you know democracy now is done right is growth on YouTube logarithmic in nature uh, you know what growth on YouTube really depends on how how, how sensor tube is fixing the numbers right and what they're doing in the background math or I see algorithm which is <laughs> biased as F. yeah it's it's totally as soon as I saw it if you're used to looking at these numbers you're gonna go okay whatever right so right away you can you can say that democracy now is on the decline I don't care if this is showing oh you know they're getting new subscribers their view counts are just garbage right and there's a reason why they're garbage because they were propagating just garbage right they were into Russia gay and all this crap and it, it was all proven to be false and they were using words that were really biased and geared towards generating hate and fear so and I was an avid democracy now watcher for a number of years right because their coverage of uh, Middle East and Latin America was pretty good but when it came to US policy and European foreign policy and they just went down the toilet like it was it was so sad to see so democracy now more subscribers than Jimmy Dory right it's continues to get more subscribers than Jimmy Dory three times more subscribers than Jimmy Dory but their view count is way less than Jimmy Dory right way less than Jimmy Dory and if you just punch in the numbers I mean you don't even need to do this anymore right you could go um, one three four thousand divided by two hundred and sixteen thousand and Jimmy Dory was really talking about uh, democracy now democracy now is getting 62 percent of the views democracy now is getting 62 percent of the views of Jimmy Dory but they have three times more daily subscribers than Jimmy Dory which accounts to three times more new subscribers than Jimmy Dory per month right and the subscribers total subscribers are higher cyber mass thank you very much for a tier one sub mark metals how are you doing long time no see mark metals uh, primer number five yes no I found one of the copies I had I think you you were the one that mentioned it right I'm not sure if you did or not hello my friend hello mark how are you doing I hope you're doing yeah <laughs> seriously are you still interested yeah if you, it's not a great shape I, I gotta look at it right you send me a message and during the next comic book stream when I have the tripod set up where we're gonna do a reading I'll show you the book okay I gotta find it again I hope I didn't bury it I'll find I'll show you the book you let me know what you think the grade is you make me an offer okay but you have to see it because I don't want to grade for someone uh, for a friend I, I want you to set it okay oh, you let me know uh, okay uh, I, I don't know when it's gonna be I'll uh, it, message me PM me and next time on the next stream next stream I set up when do you think you would do that I don't know it'll be in the next couple of weeks anyway my schedule got a, I already had it set up to do but my partner's schedule got a little bit um, messed up because she's a nurse and they're really under pressure so I adjust my schedule according to my partners okay okay M uh, PM me brother I, I only found one of them I got one graded for myself actually a while ago uh, but I have raw okay now check this out so democracy now garbage if you're watching democracy now stop one of the reasons their view counts are down the toilet is because they've been propagating BS right now let's look at the young Turks the young Turks let's just do a straight-up multiple right young Turks are getting 972,000 views according to sensor tube 972 divided by 216 so 
Oh, I did multiply. Pooper scooper. Nine seven two divided by two one six. Doop. Four point four point five times more views. Four point five times more views. Actually, let me put it up top because that's where we're putting the relationship, right? So 4.5 times more views on a daily basis. Take that with a gigantic grain of salt. Will do, my friend. Awesome, Mark. Thank you. I mean, keeping an eye out to see if you're not <laughs> sure or not, right? So 4.5 times more views than Jimmy Dory, right? And this would continue here too. So this is going to be 4.5 times more than that. But let's just do the the calculator 29,000 divided by 6.5 you get 4.46 which is 4.5 so 4.5 times more views right now let's do the multiple here 5.2 million divided by 0.866 because that's less than a million right 0.866 boink they have 6.35 times more subscribers, right? And if we assume that they're getting 10,000 new subscribers per month, because if you do the on social blade, right? They're getting 3,000, oops, 3.3 times more uh, subscribers on a monthly basis right so the views are four and a half 4.5 times subscriber count is going through daily motion uh, going through social social blade is only 3.3 times more subscriber growth per month but the total subscribers is 6.3 times right now what you can do and i did this uh for some of them if you go to the front page of all of these channels you'll find out that jimmy dory's videos the new ones that he puts out get more views than democracy now and the young turks right so jimmy dory with jimmy dory with 866,000 subscribers his new videos get more views than democracy now which is garbage as well as a lot of them as well as the young Turks who has they have 6.5 6.3 times more subscribers than Jimmy Dory right I don't understand the other math but this is easy yeah this is so easy to to pick here I'll, I'll i'll do it for the young turks because they're they're crashing and burning they're crashing and burning here i'll give you the numbers for some of these right here is jimmy dory's now if you want you, you do the count here's jimmy dory's last videos first one he put out it was 20 hours ago right and I'll give you the Young Turks as well. <laughs> this guy's face is a joke, right? I'll I'll pick uh, same time frame, same time frame, same time frame. Oh come on, okay, check this out. Da -da -da -da. So Jimmy Dory he put out a video twenty hours ago, and I'm gonna go with the same time frame because that's the most recent video Jimmy Dory put out. Jimmy Dory twenty hours ago, fifty thousand views. Twenty two hours ago, ninety four thousand views. One day ago, sixty two thousand views. And then one day ago, 60, 64,000, 90,000, 60, 63,000, 63,000. So that's the first two were 20 hours ago. And the last five were uh, a day ago. And they range there. There 62,000 is the minimum. 90,000 is the maximum from a day ago. Right. Here's the Young Turks from 18 hours ago. They got. 68,000 views, right? Remember, remember, remember. Young Turks has 6.3 times more subscribers than Jimmy Dory, right? From 18 hours ago, they have 68,000 views, right? 
17 hours ago they got 38,000 views 17 hours ago uh, 43,000 views and so on right one day ago a one day ago video they put out 64,000 30,000 130,000 wow oh you know why they got Trump's face on that one Jimmy Dory doesn't put Trump well no he does I guess but he doesn't really does he I haven't seen a Trump face on Jimmy Dory forever right so young Turks 64,000 let's write these down really I gotta write these down so we're just gonna go with the one day ago right one day ago they got 64,000 these are in thousands 30,000 130,000 54,000 they put out a lot of crap videos don't they <laughs> oh here are, it's getting to the end 54,000 34,000 uh, 34,000 again okay 94,000 and 33,000 and 31,000 33,000 and 31,000 right that's how many videos they put out one two three four five six seven eight nine okay Jimmy Dory does someone want to do the average of these do you have a calculator you want to do an average of these here's Jimmy Dory one day ago 62,000 64,000 90,000 right 63,000 I'll do this one someone else if you if you got the calculator going if you want to do that one let me do this one definitely a pattern definitely a pattern <laughs> that's why Jimmy Dory rocks right you fact check his stuff you find he's telling the truth man S 62 plus 64 plus 90 plus 63 divided by 4 Doink. so average Jimmy Dory 69,000 let's say 70,000 69,000 and 0.75 right here I'll do that because I haven't seen the average yet I'm gonna do the average for young Turks young garbage 64,000 plus 30,000 plus 130,000 and the 130,000 one is because they got a yelling Trump base so people are clicking it right plus 54,000 plus 34,000 plus 34,000 plus 94,000 94,000 plus 33,000 plus 31,000 equals that divided by nine right one two three four five six seven eight nine divided by nine fifty six thousand views average k k so what have we learned today we have learned that the young terse is pure garbage <laughs> do you do twitch as part time i do it uh, i do it yeah no i do sometimes i go crazy there's, there's been times i've done like 20 live streams in a month right like multiple tons of like 20 even more than 20. sometimes i do 12 days in a row right uh probability distribution uh -huh, awesome nickname by the way oh no that's rx who said that propaganda map propaganda map so check this out young turks pure garbage six point six point three five six point three five times more subscribers than Jimmy Dory right according to sensor tubes data right if this was fact people were watching their crap Jimmy Dory's average views from videos he put out a day ago is 70,000 right 70 times 6 young Turks should have been getting 420,000 views on the videos they put out how much are they put putting how much are they getting views 56,000 views while they have over six times more subscribers than Jimmy Dory 
and 420 I know they should have got four. they don't they don't they don't get 420 F them right they don't deserve 420 they don't understand 420 that's why they're such crap right that's why they're such crap everything leads to 420 doesn't it 420 is the truth right if no one if the if the people don't hit 420 you know they're full of full of BS right so they got six times more subscribers they're getting less views on their videos than Jimmy Dory I'm not even gonna bother with democracy now that's just that's just a joke that's just a joke <laughs> let's do it out of just just because hey where's the click on their YouTube here's I'll just read out the numbers to you guys for democracy now the videos they put out a day ago let's see day ago day ago day ago oh my god disaster disaster here's democracy now's views 11,000 7.7 thousand 17,000 11,000 oh one of them got 63,000 five oh and that's it 11 let's do let's do democracy now 11,000 11 plus uh, what is it 11 plus 7.7 7.7 plus 17 plus 11 plus 63 equals divided by five five videos democracy now is 22,000 views and they got they get three times more subscribers on a daily basis than Jimmy Dory right they have more total subscribers than Jimmy Dory Jimmy Dory is blowing democracy now and the young Turks out of the water right if this was this was on the stock market right and these were competing companies right you put all your money you go all in J Jimmy Dory you you would be shorting the crap out of democracy now and the young Turks right because they're garbage they're collapsing okay that's the beauty of ratios it tells you everything you need to know about any system and you can fact check and e even with the skewed numbers that sensor tube puts out even with sensor tube unsubscribing independent creators because Jimmy Dore is independent they are not they take money from centralized power to put up propaganda right Jimmy Dory one man show with his couple of assistants couple of people that he works with putting stuff out right very important with this you can figure out who's telling the truth and who's not who's got a reliable um, reliable information and who doesn't right fantastic I really wanted to share this and I hadn't dug down the data I just put the pages up right I just put the pages up super cool super cool super cool full 420 pops up right 420 is everywhere right bias algorithm on sensor to though the math of three channels information yeah yeah it, it's the and this is going through social blade by the way and the view counts we're looking the view counts we're looking on sensor tube and that's we know they're faking like they're promoting authoritative figures they're kicking up their views and independent creators they're kicking down their views that's what we see on mine anyway okay cyanide for dinner how are you doing sly aren't you making an assumption about how the daily sub counts should uh, correlate with daily of your ship uh, yeah for sure we're making a whole bunch of assumptions here but but the total sub counts are pretty pretty important right Jimmy Dory has the least number of subs right least number of subs he's getting way more views on his videos according to the skewed data than uh, democracy now or the young Turks 
right? And to take the data with a grain of salt, but I can honestly tell you, from someone that watched years ago, watched a couple of videos from the Young Turks, I realized they were just pure propaganda, just garbage. I couldn't believe people were watching some of that crap, right? Now they know, most people know that they're just pure propaganda. And Democracy Now! I used to watch avidly almost every show they put out, but then they went into Russiagate and Trump derangement syndrome and started spewing garbage. And it was just like horrendous to watch. It was watching like a friend turn into an addict and just ruin their lives it was just depressing I wish I could go back in time and go to the zoo and throw the guy in the gorilla compound <laughs> Heisenberg how are you doing hi I am arrived now what is what is this about this is about looking at uh, uh, info on uh, based on three different channels on sensor tube just looking at ratios oh the first YouTube video ever ha 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 that guy I don't yeah maybe no no that guy was a legit guy I don't think it is important there are lots of channels with a lot of subs that don't have a large viewership uh, Ray Williams Johnson is a good I don't know Ray Williams Johnson dumb viewers it was more subs but they definitely mess with numbers both users and platforms indeed I would agree it shows that young tourists and democracy now are declining but it doesn't mean YouTube is fixing I'm, I'm not assuming that YouTube is fixing the numbers I can honestly tell you that for my channel on sensor tube there's shenanigans going on there's no doubt there's no doubt especially on certain types of videos we put out it's crazy right dr. Hang is it okay to say that young tourists gets less subs per view uh, video but put out almost twice the amount of videos uh, than Jimmy Dory uh, possibly possibly but it wouldn't account for the huge discrepancy I don't think it accounts for the huge discrepancy this is they're not putting out six times more videos than Jimmy Dory right Jimmy Dory put out four videos in one day Young Turks put out nine videos right double it so they put out twice as many videos as Jimmy Dory but they got six times more subscribers why are they getting way less views than Jimmy Dory it the discrepancy doesn't count my guess is a lot of people have stopped watching the Young Turks right that's that's my takeaway from this right all oh, the zoo guys want to censor to owners no are you serious I didn't know that Elder God. So I'm going to read your comment again, uh, Doctor Hank, because uh, it's it's good to, to go through the interpretation of this. Yeah, that means, uh, is it okay to say that Young Turks gets less subs per video, uh, but put out almost twice the amount of videos than? Yeah, but again, yeah, you're right. It makes sense to interpret it in the way I'm I'm doing it. That's the interpretation I get from this, right? And I love looking at data, trying to figure out if there is a way that. You can justify or you could figure out why the data is presenting itself in a certain light right or maybe they're they're advertising their YouTube on their TV so people are, are subbing from there but aren't watching uh, for sure there's people that have subbed on the young Turks right they might come across one video they go sub and then they watch another video they go oh this is pure garbage <laughs> I'm not gonna watch anymore but they forget to unsub right uh, that could be one but I, I can as an independent creator I can I can tell you this for the last few months okay uh, we're we're flatlining right we don't get subscriber growth so Cer certain months we're getting negatives and then I release stuff that I know sensor tube doesn't demote and then the subscribers go up so all I'm doing right now with my channel we got 33,000 subscribers I'm I'm playing the 33 game 33,000 game so when I go when I go below 33,000 getting close to 32,000 I start releasing videos that I know sensor tube likes they don't 
you know it's not sensitive topics and then the subscriber counts goes above and when i go above 33,000, i lay it in hard boom 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 bah, 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 bah. subscribers drop subscribers drop freaking out view the youtube doesn't know what to do when you're uploading the video it, it does checking for like a whole day and then you got to upload it again and it's freaking out like the youtube automated algorithm sensor tube automated algorithm starts freaking out i'm personally laughing my ass off on that front right and then we just play the 33,000 game, right? It is what it is. And I know Jimmy Dory's talked about it. It's exactly the same thing that's happening to him. And it's exactly the same thing that has been happening to a lot of other independent content creators that I follow. That's why any independent content creator that is uploading their content on any other platform, I watch them on the other platforms. Correlation versus causation. Correlation does not equal uh, correlation does not equal correlation. <laughs> oh my god. On a good note, I'm getting a lot of Chicho recommended videos of late. All mathematics. Ah, nice. Awesome. Awesome. Oh my god. Me at the zoo. Is this the first video that <laughs> was uploaded to YouTube? <laughs> it was uploaded in April, April 23rd, 2005. Uh, da -da 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 by the site co founder. It was a site co-founder. I didn't know that. Who uploaded the video on a channel with the username. Yeah. And that channel has like a million subscribers or something like that. And gang, don't forget. Free Assange, Free Assange, Free Assange. Julian Assange is a publisher and journalist that has been crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity. For more information, see wikileaks.org, defend.wikileaks.org, or our Julian Assange and Wikileaks playlist and stop watching this crap and that crap and start watching Jimmy Dory I just wanted to do that right I just wanted to do that oh we're already over two hours we're already two times up gang of uh, functions I don't know who was here that wanted to talk about functions I got a lot of if you do Chicho CHYCHO and functions on DuckDuckGo you should get the videos that I've put out on functions okay gang aside from that thank you for being here thank you for the questions regarding the line and the parabola and the shortest distance and the riddle dr. Hang. that was fantastic that felt like a propaganda piece but I appreciate the effort I know it was possibly a propaganda piece but man any opportunity to trash talk propaganda and recommend independent content creators okay cool channel I enjoyed awesome probably distribution I'm glad you enjoyed <laughs> and we, we have done uh, math probability mathematics as well gang aside from that if you want to know what this work is about I am on patreon patreon.com forward slash chicho C H Y C H O if you want to follow this work which is basically layered on mathematics follow the work on patreon I don't put anything beyond paywall everything's creative Commons. share and share a like okay for those of you who've been supporting this work on patreon gang thank you very much for the support you do great work here lad well done <laughs> fest on all joy thank you very much gang we are live streaming on twitch twitch.tv forward slash chicho live C H Y C H O L I V E. if you want to participate in the chat chat twitch is where you want to be at and gang i saw a lot of follows come up and stuff like this thank you for the follows thank you for the support thank you for being here it is in large part because of the support we're getting here and on patreon that we're able to do this and mod <laughs> elder god thank you for being here and taking care of business and having our backs i do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on minds bk gab and parlor you can follow the work there we do shop share some additional content there but patreon is probably the best way to do and you can come to our twitch channel anytime you want live streaming or not type in exclamation mark social and all those links will pop up including our discord page at the bottom here where there's people that have joined our channel our server there and are sharing a fair bit of information okay you're definitely welcome to join us there i do upload the audio for live streams where we don't have any visuals onto soundcloud as a podcast and if you want to consume this information as a podcast those podcasts should be available to you on your favorite podcasting platform including spotify and itunes okay 
and we will be uploading this live stream to SensorTube, to BitChute, to Rumble, and to Odyssey. And I'll probably go through and take out the segments where we did especially, specifically the mathematics, especially the line, the parabola, that was fantastic. And most likely this one regarding Jimmy Dore, pull those out as individual segments and upload those to all these four platforms. And for those of you that are supporting this work on these video sharing platforms, thank you very much for the support. And for those of you who are supporting this work uh, by you know, have joined SensorTube membership, YouTube membership, thank you very much for the support, gang. Aside from that, thank you for being here, gang. I'll announce the next set of streams, probably in the next couple of days, once uh, we get our schedule sorted out here. Okay, aside from that, I hope you guys are having a fantastic day, and I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Bye, everyone.